unapologetic, unadulterated, uncompromising, in a land that is unrelenting. Greetings, brothers and sisters from around the world, and welcome back to the home, the haven, the stronghold, and the super fortress of intelligent black thought. This is the BlackChannel.net radio. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, the Black Authority. Joining you here live on Monday night because white supremacy does not sleep, it does not rest, and neither will we. Well, for those of you who were not aware of the situation as it currently progresses. His name was Freddie Gray. He was accosted by police. He was arrested by police. He had numerous injuries in police custody, including getting his back almost completely severed and he died. in the city of Baltimore, Maryland, a place that every television show that you've looked at and popularized by the HBO show The Wire, why you thought that you were in some type of haven of black power and influence, that's what you thought you were in. At Maryland.gov, if you all go to their government website, Maryland.gov, Governor Larry Hogan signs executive order declaring state of emergency at the request of Baltimore City, at the request of Baltimore City. Governor Larry Hogan has signed an executive order declaring a state of emergency and activating the National Guard to address the growing violence and unrest in Baltimore City, what they describe as violence and unrest. There has only been, the violence has already happened. Freddie Gray is dead. There are no dead police. Freddie Gray is dead. Freddie Gray is dead. The police are walking the streets. If you want to know what a 21st century Holocaust would look like, now you know. It would take the Brits over there at the Guardian to stay on top of this, by the way. Your American media is telling you precious little. That is what a damn fascist Gestapo police state looks like. They even have a live feed on the story that I posted uh, on my website, on the uh, Facebook group, the official Jason Black group. I also posted it on Twitter. Rawlings Blake. She is the Negro bedwinch whore of white supremacy. who has been supporting their reign of terror now, a black female who has shown you that Sally Hemings wasn't the only black female willing to lift her skirt and allowed the beasts to have their way with her. Showing you all that Sambo was not the only person Lined up and chomping at the bit. I'm telling you the reality the way it is. She was the lone figure who fought the Baltimore City Council against requiring police to wear body cameras. She was on, actually on the side of the police against black people. So much for your black politicians. So much for that. So much for, I don't care what they do. 
All of you brain-dead Obama supporters who say that garbage. I vote for politicians, but I don't care what they do. Apparently, you need to be back on the short bus to school. You are not just annoying, you are dangerous. The people who say that I vote for Barack, I vote for Rawlings Blake, the people who say those kind of things, you are not just dang, you're not just annoying, you're dangerous. Just got updated at the Guardian website, a spokesman for the Baltimore City Police informs reporters that 15 officers have been injured in the unrest. He says two are still being treated in a hospital, that the officers were, quote, injured by flying debris. Injured by fly, the officers were injured. Do they mean that they were injured like Darren Wilson was injured? Is that the kind of injuries they had? Now, they weren't shot. Nobody's opened fire on them. They weren't burned. Nobody's burned them. I'm sure they were injured. Quote, the police injury. Now, when police beat black people to death, they say that it was reasonable force. But a police officer who, who, who is hit by a stray spitball immediately has to run to the hospital to, to tend to their wounds. So don't trust anybody in the city government. Don't believe anything you're going to hear there. Because that's simply not the case. That's simply not the case. What they are trying to reinforce and establish in America today is nothing short of a white supremacist, racist, fascist state that says that black people can be killed at any time, at any place, by anyone, be it police or private citizens. It is the resurrection and reinstitution of the Jim Crow laws of the Jim Crow rules and statutes that black people have no rights and that you can be murdered anywhere, any place, and it is the state that will defend it. It's the state that will step in and say, we condone this. And it will be your black politicians that do it to you. We're talking about violence. And yet there was no one speaking about the violence of the police. Rawlings Blake did not tell the police to stop being violent. She said we just need to investigate some more. She didn't say that the police have to stop being violent. And the real question is, who are you brain dead bastards out there who are still supporting Barack and Blake? Who are you? Because you are people who need to get a visit. You are individuals who need to be stopped. You are the ones who enable and condone the deaths of black people everywhere. Every time somebody comes out and defends the police, you are like Nazi collaborators. If you are a black person today, particularly my young black people in your 20s or your teens or younger, listening to me tonight, understand something. Your parents have sold you out. Your parents have sold you out so that they can keep a little old pension, and the many of them don't even have that, so that the police will not bust them over the heads. They have offered you up as the sacrificial lambs so that you have no inheritance, you have no protection, and you have no sanctuary. Your cowardly bastard parents and grandparents have told the white superstructure that we will sacrifice our own children and grandchildren if you let us have a pass. 
If you're a young black person today, the police are killing you. And they're killing you because your parents gave them permission to do it. Your parents said that if you give us a pass, you can have my children, you can whore my daughters, you can kill my sons, you can incarcerate them, you can put us back into enslavement. Your parents have done this to you. Kwame Kilpatrick did this to you. He never fought the police, he enabled them. Ron Kirk did this to you, he never fought the police, he enabled them. Tom Bradley did this to you. He never fought the police. He was one of the police. If you saw the documentary 7 a.m., then you know already that Tom Bradley was a police officer. No wonder police violence got worse under Tom Bradley, not better. They choose a black figurehead, a black mascot that is paid for by white supremacists, elevated by white supremacists. Funded and financed and backed by white supremacists and they send them out there to our people and our people so desperate and aimless and, 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 and clueless about how to elect leadership. Just take the first black face that shoved at them and say, hey, he looks like one of us. Sir, surely he'll look out for us. That's what we're, that's the game that we're playing. That's the intellectual mental masturbation that we're playing today. And it is young black men who are paying the price. For this cowardice and social intellectual malfeasance. Young black men in their teens and, 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 and 20s and young adolescents and younger. They are murdering young black people today. Now they're moving on to the females. Rakia Boyd. Oh well. Oh well. The judges and the prosecutors have gotten together. What the hell are you talking about? It wasn't reckless. Have you all noticed that a black man can be charged with murder and put on death row with no eyewitnesses, no murder weapon, and no premeditation? Have you all noticed that? Day after day, they're exonerating black men who are wrongfully incarcerated and put on death row. Black men sentenced to die. They had no prior intent to kill anybody. No premeditation. You didn't have a murder weapon. There were no eyewitnesses. And yet, they could be sentenced to death row. Police are gunning black folk down. And the first thing prosecutors tell you, we can't... Death, death row is off the table. The death penalty is off the table. It's not even a consideration. Oh, we can't, we can't charge them with the death penalty. Now, black men, they can charge you every single day with little or no evidence whatsoever. And you don't have to have had premeditation to get death row. You walk into a liquor store with a gun. If you shoot somebody, doesn't matter that you did not premeditate to do it. This is a modern Jim Crow fascist state. And it is your black politicians and preachers, the older generation. The reason why the young people today are sitting ducks is because the older generation has handed you over. Your Al Sharptons, that older generation, has handed you over. They come out and tell you that old black clergy, many of which are on the payroll of the white supremacists at City Hall and the city councils, and, 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 and the Freedom of Information Act has proven this, ain't that right, Reverend Al and Jesse Jackson, ain't that right? That older generation has sold you out. Your pastors and your clergy and your teachers ain't got no fight no more. There are no black Cliven Bundys. Oh God, did I just say it like that? Yeah, I just said it like that. There are no elderly black people taking a stand with gun in hand. We don't have that. The elderly people with the will to fight are over there with the white supremacists. They're over there with them. You don't have them in black society. You don't have them drawing a line in the sand and saying this far and no farther. You don't have that. You have black people living with in delusional 
irrational, made-up fantasies. Claiming that they're fighting the police. That's another way of saying that don't worry, everything's all right. Everything is not all right. If you're a young black person today, you better get your ass off of being offended and start learning to love the truth that you are hearing. You have no sanctuary. Your parents have handcuffed you and crippled you for the white supremacists to come and devour you so that they would be left alone. That is why you have no inheritance. That's why you go to school with your white schoolmates and they've got power, wealth, and influence. They've got people with finances to draw off of. Your folks got you a pair of damn Air Jordans said, what the hell else you want from me? They don't give a damn that the police kill you so long as it gets the cops off of their backs. Young black people today, within the sound of my voice, you better wake up and understand what you're hearing now because it is you who will die and pay the price. It is you who are being set up for annihilation now. Your parents have said, damn you! I got my Cadillac. I got my Suburban. I got my Social Security check. You go out there with those white supremacists, you figure it out. And when those police lights pull up behind you, and the officers of the SS of the modern day American police state yank you out of the car, then what? Your parents want to see how dumb you are. And white supremacy wants to verify how stupid you are. They want you to prove to them that you are every bit as cowardly and wayward and listless and aimless as your parents were. They want to verify that you are willing to be the second civil rights generation. I'm telling the truth about it tonight. They want to know if you can be cowed into submission and if you can be beaten down and intimidated like your parents were. They want to know if you're ready to sell your soul like Angela Davis and Toni Morrison and Oprah Winfrey. They want to know if you're ready to whore yourself out. And they know sometimes you got to put some pressure on. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta put them in that, uh, twist their arm. Make them squeal a little bit. But that'll be enough. Make them buckle under. Because they know that black folk generally ain't got much fight in them. That's what the civil rights generation taught them. Your cowardly, gutless fathers taught white supremacy that black blood was cheap. Your gutless, cowardly fathers taught them how to kill black people with impunity. And that you could get away with it. No, 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 no. They didn't teach them that they could just get away with it. They taught the white supremacists that you could kill black people as a matter of daily course. And you could make it into a lifestyle. That you could kill black people and make it a lifestyle. Just a way of living. Living for them, dying for us. And now they want to make sure that the next generation of young blacks takes the programming like the previous generations did. They want to know how easy it'll be to make you cower under. That's what they want to know. They want to know how many of you are going to try to hide behind ignorance, illiteracy, and poverty. Thinking that that will save you. And in fact, you are simply accepting your position on this plantation. You're not fighting it. They want to see what you're made of.
They want to know if you're as big a group of gutless, cowering, spineless, whimpering cowards that your parents have been. That's what they want to know. They want to know if cowards like you are going to go hide at a church. They want to count how many of you are going to hide at the church. They want to know how many of you are dumb and stupid and will let pastors who are so obviously working for your enemies, they want to know if you're going to let them get away with it. They want to know if you're going to still listen to people who are obviously puppets of the white supremacist structure. Rawlings Blake is obviously their puppet. And they want to know if you're going to continue to whore yourself to her the way she has whored herself to them. They want to know. They want to see it. Oh, tonight's a bitter pill to swallow. But if you're under the age of 30, you better listen. You better recognize what the hell you're walking into. You better understand that your parents have sent you into a world of wolves. Into a den of lions and you are unarmed. And your parents sent you unarmed because while they were sending you, they were getting their pass. White supremacy teaches their children that you have an obligation to the next generation to pass on to them what was passed on to you, and that sometimes that must be passed on in blood. They teach that from time to time that must occur. And in black society, we've taught our children there is nothing worth fighting and dying for. Well... Nothing worth fighting and dying for except acting like a bunch of idiots at a club or getting a pair of shoes. Now that's worth fighting or dying for. But don't you dare think about challenging good Mr. Charlie. Mr. Charlie is good now. Mr. Charlie get my welfare check. Mr. Charlie is giving my food stamps. Mr. Charlie give my just a little pillow job I've been working at. I've been working the forklift. Forty damn years. I've been working the forklift for 40 damn years. You never went anywhere in that company. You never elevated anywhere in that company. You were never on track to, 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 to be anything of a, 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 a senior management. But man, oh man, aren't you glad to tell your kids that this is what you are? And your children don't know any better. Your children don't know any better. Or worse, many of them, you have indoctrinated them and conditioned them to be as cowardly as you were. Isn't that shameful? You have conditioned them to be every bit as cowardly as you were. I was going to talk about something a little bit different here tonight. But I'm going to go ahead and open up the phone lines for you now. The number is 646-787-1933. 646-787-1933. Those people are out there talking and plotting and planning. Don't you know for them to do all this stuff this quickly, they, they, they've had the blueprint in place. Don't you all think that ever since the L.A. riots back in 91, don't you all think that they've got that together? Don't you know that they're on top of it now? Every state has a plan for dealing with their Negro problem. The goal is to create a plantation where you happily sit and accept your own decimation. That is the plan. They want to know how many of you are bedwinches. They want to know how many of you are coons. They want to know how many of you are sambos. They want to know how many of you are cowards. They want to know how many of you are superstitious. They want to know how many of you are cowardly. In other words, they want to just want to know how many of you are going to go along with this. They just want to know how many of you are going to roll with the program. And they will give you a Stephanie Rawlings Blake to hide behind and cower behind. They will give that to you. They will give you one.
They will give you a black face to hide behind if they suspect how cowardly you are and look at what most black people do. Most of all, they want to see what our reaction to this is going to be. They want to know how black people today are going to react to this. That's what they want to find out. They want to know, are you going to resort to childish things? That's what they want to know. They want to know if you're going to resort to, to tertiary things. That's what they want to find out. You see, the white supremacists are not worried about rioting. I hate to be the one to break your hearts. They are not the least bit concerned about your rioting. They don't care about that. That doesn't sway them. They want to know if after killing you, are you going to start talking and thinking like a nation? I didn't say a military. They want to know if you are going to start talking and thinking like a nation of people. They want to know if you are, they're checking to see, are you going to start adopting nationhood within yourselves? Can we just tell the truth about this the way it is? Because you know I'm going to do it. Can we just tell the facts of the matter the way that they actually stand? Brothers and sisters, rioting is a tactic. Rioting is a plea for mercy and a plea for help. Civil unrest has its place, but as black people are practicing it and doing it today, we're not actually trying to stop anything. We're venting, some people see it as a take, an opportunity to free pair of shoes. This, that is not the manner in which you riot. That is not the manner in which you have a, 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 a civil unrest, an uprising. A true uprising by people who have power is offensive, not defensive. It is action, not reactive. And as black people, they do not take us seriously because we are not behaving as a nation of people. When the Italians came from Sicily, they walked on American soil, but they had a code which meant that basically they understood that they were not Americans first. They were Italians first. And even though they were an oppressed people, they prospered. Jews came to America. And even though they walked on American soil, they had a code of conduct. Which meant that they understood that they were a nation of people. And they did not look to the Gentiles. They looked to themselves. And even though they were an oppressed people, they prospered. The Irish came to America. And even though they walked on American soil, they understood that they were a nation of people. They had a code of conduct. And first and foremost, paramount, they didn't see themselves. Did you ever hear Irish women say that we're not Irish first, we are women first? Or that we're here to stand up for Irish women? Have you ever heard of Italian women? We're standing up as Italian women. We're not with the men, we're Italian women. The men over there, we over here. Have you ever seen other groups succumb to this childish, ignorant, infantile? I mean, some of you are just so absolutely immature and childlike, it's really frightening.
You ought to be playing with toy blocks. You are really that brain damaged and emotionally broken. These other people did not succumb to that. They don't see themselves as Americans first, men first, women first. They are Jewish first, Italian first, Arab first, Irish first. And all of those people prosper. Unfortunately, black people are the intellectual wards of white supremacy. So we see everything that we do, we take our cues from them. And if they even throw out something, even if it's a lie, even if what they throw out is a lie, we will still sit there and dance a jig and sing the song with them, even if we know what they're saying is a lie. Among Italian people, they put their money together. They pulled their resources. They colonized and aggregated as a community. They came together and conglomerated as a community. They had a code of conduct that said that you don't speak to outsiders except to make money. And they had an enforcement mechanism within the community. And everybody was in on it and everybody who refused to be in on it, you either got run out or shut out. You either got run out or you got shoved out. But that was what they did. That's how they did it. And black people today are sitting ducks to white supremacy because we have refused to accept our place of nationhood. The evidence of the last 400 years should have taught you that. 150 years, 100 years, 60 years, 50 years, 40 years, 20 years, 10 years, 5 years, 3 years, 2 years, 1 year, 6 months, 2 months, 7 days. All of this should have taught you that we are a people under siege, that we are not a part of them. You can keep trying this bull crap all you want. It will never work. Black people for time in memoriam. I don't know what it is about us. I really don't. But there is a component within black people, within Africans, that has this unnatural desire to civilize the uncivilizable. I will say that again. There is a component within the African psyche that is dogged and determined and even willing to bleed and die in order to civilize that which cannot be civilized. In order to integrate with that which cannot be assimilated with. Because we bring civilization decency, honor, all of the things that built man. And we keep wasting the gift of civilization upon those who have no interest in it. And even worse, many black people idolize and look up to them even more frightening. No, I'm here to debrief you. I'm here to get your damn heads woken up. Your parents raised you to bow and scrape and suck up to them. Your parents raised you to with this inferiority complex that everything you do in your life and every 
act that you conduct should be focused towards getting them to like you. That everything you do should be concentrated towards, towards getting them to pat you on the head and approve of you. This is how you end up with five-year-old black children preferring white Barbie dolls to black ones. That's how it happened. Because they, your children hate themselves because they were raised by the best self-haters in the history of the universe the civil rights generation and older. They were the biggest, most furious, vicious self-haters in the history of man, and they taught their children and grandchildren to despise themselves. So much so to the point that the children let themselves be killed by whites, and they say to themselves, well, I guess this is a good thing. I guess there are worse ways to go. I guess it could be worse. I want to bring you face to face with a few more points here. I'll see if I can take a phone call or two here because there's some points I want to bring up about what we, what a lot of suggestions, what to do about it. Let me get caller from 646. You're on live with the Black Channel. Uh, hello, TV. This is Jimmy from Brooklyn. What's on your mind, brother? Uh, deja vu all over again. Um, at the end of the day, it's Ferguson, now Baltimore. All these people with large black communities that can't get together. Um, uh, but South Carolina. And again and again, but people want to talk about integration and being accepted. Mm. It's never worked. I mean, Dr. Boyce Watkins, who, like you said, is a new, is pretty much as John Henry Clark, you have to build. You, you have to build. And it's, there's only a few of us who get it. And that, that's, that's the sad part about it. I mean, but that's always been the way it's been. Brothers, since Frederick Douglass, Booker T. Washington, W.E.B. Du Bois, Marcus Garvey, that, brother, they've been saying it for a century and a half. It is not that black people do not know. That is the single greatest lie that's been perpetuated. It is not that black people do not know. It is that we only have two types of black people, the courageous and the cowards. And the cowards outnumber the rest of us. The cowards are willing. Here's the problem, brother. They are not ignorant of what's going on. They know what's going on. They know what's happening. And they are willing to allow themselves to be hurt, killed, slaughtered, raped. Their children hurt, killed, slaughtered, raped. They're willing to sell out each and every single last one of us. Because they have this sick, demented, diseased, psychological fetish that they will do anything. And I mean absolutely anything to come into contact with the oppressor class and to prove to that oppressor class that they are willing to lay down and hoard themselves. Take a look at Halle Berry. Take a look at Stephen A. Smith. Take a look at Jesse Lee Peterson, Larry Elder, Barack Obama, Stephanie Rawlings Blake. The list goes so damn long, you just forget about it. That is, every time you see a squad, a line, a platoon of Negroes lined up, at Nike Town, those are Negroes who say, that's it, I've surrendered, I'm done. I ain't fighting white supremacy, I'm, I'm done, I've checked out. Let me buy these shoes, let me buy this cell phone, and hope I can scurry home without getting my freaking brains blown out. Let me see if I can do that. But I have checked out. Nigga, you got to go fight white supremacy by yourself. I ain't fighting nothing. You know, TBA, you make very valid points. Uh, last time, I, I'm, I'm in New York. 
I went out to a club and uh, Bobby Schmurter, they had that song, Hot Nigga. And, you know, I'm in the club, but I don't listen to the radio like that. So I heard the lyrics of the song, so everybody's dancing. And this club is a very mixed crowd, so you have the Asians, white, and they're singing the lyrics to the song. And I had to sit down. I was like, oh, my God, this is disgusting. But, but put the cherry on top of that night. And I kid you, I'm not making this up. I was with a guy who this white girl comes up to him. Now, she's like an Amazon. I'm like 6'3", probably like 230. She has to be my size. And he took her home and said, oh, I always wanted to sleep with a white girl. I'm like, but that's the type of white girl you want to sleep with? He's like, oh, that's something off my bucket list. I was like, uh, I just have to pass on that. If that's the case. A sick, it's twisted, sad. demented, psychological fetish. TB, I've been all over the world, and to to be, I'm not even a buffer. It. A lot of them are overrated. <laughs> a lot of these white women that they drew over is very overrated. Well, here's the problem, brother. As black men, if we would focus on some damn building, instead of becoming the world's foremost authorities and connoisseurs of females, black men talk about women while they're out here killing us. We talk about shoes you would never know. Is it, what, Monday? Three days ago, Friday, in Baltimore. It, did you go to any clubs in Baltimore, anybody out there? Would you, uh, did you go to clubs in New York? You would never know that Eric Garner happened looking at the club scene in New York. You would never know that Tamir Rice happened looking at the club scene in Cleveland. You would never know that Mike Brown happened looking at the club scene in St. Louis. You would never know that, that, that Trayvon Martin happened looking at this club scene in Sanford, Florida. You would never know it. You, with the way that black men fixate on sex and, and, and fixate on conquest of non-black females, you would never know that black men were the single most hunted and endangered species in the United States. You'd never know it. Looking at our I mean, shoe game and the club game, you'd never guess it. I mean... TBA, I fell back from dating because I was like, look, I have to get myself together. I have to build. I was like, I don't have time for it. <laughs> you know, people talking about going and having fun. I'm like, you see what's going on outside? You know, how you can see yourself as a man. I think Damon Dash had a, a great point when he was on uh, the breakfast club and he went off on him. You know how you can look at yourself as a man knowing that you work for somebody and pretty much at the end of the day, you can't even bring you can't even bring your child up here to work. You're making somebody else you're making somebody else rich. At the end of the day, how can you call yourself a man if you are benefiting and empowering people who spit on you? Barack Obama has spit on black people and you still got black folk carrying the water and defending him as if he's actually done something for black people and done nothing. Had one clodhopper jackass clown today talking about my brother's keeper. I mean, that shows you how stupid people are. That tells you how ignorant they are. That tells you how used to losing black people are. Black people are so used to losing that they don't even think about it twice anymore. We're just, we're just so accustomed to it that winning is a foreign concept now. Losing is just a fait accompli. It is. Losing doesn't even shame us or bother us anymore. Show me the last black person who was ashamed or bothered to lose. I'll wait for that one. You know, it, in fact, I mean... I remember even being a contractor over in the Marshall Islands um, and, you know, these black people are just happy. Now, mind you, it's, it's an island full of Micronesian people and everything else. And these black people were happy to be around these white people who try to dominate everything around them. 
and you know, as I distanced myself from them, they're like, "Oh, you don't want to be a part of the club?" I was like, "Nah, that's that's all right. I don't like being around somebody I know I'm not accepted by." And they looked at me like I had three heads. <laughs> Let me give you something to think about here, okay? Let me give every damn body out there something to think about. Maybe you can help me with this. Baltimore, Maryland, major American city, gotta be. It's got a damn NFL team. Does Baltimore have an NBA team? Uh, the Wizards is the closest thing to it. Okay. Because I don't know if Baltimore has an NBA team or not. I don't know. But I, I do know they do have the Ravens. I do know they have that. That means you got a bunch of black millionaires in Baltimore. That means you got a bunch of them. Now, these are black men who could walk their asses out that damn stadium, get pulled over by the sheriffs, and get killed. They could walk out of there and get themselves killed. They wouldn't even make it home. They wouldn't even make it home. And how many of them are saying, you know what? We got to do something about this. How many of them are saying that? How many of them are saying we have to do something about this? Don't the, these black men, you could end up like Freddie Gray, not next week, not tomorrow, tonight. If you are a black man in or around Baltimore, you could end up like Freddie Gray tonight. And Stephanie Rawlings Blake won't lift a damn finger to help you. And your black police officials in Baltimore won't lift a damn finger to help you. And the black men in the NBA in Baltimore, or the NFL in Baltimore, and any other millionaires there and whatnot, they'll just sit there looking at it. There is supposed to be a war council in Baltimore tonight. There is supposed to be a war council of the biggest, bestest, brightest, most resourceful, richest, and well-connected black men in Baltimore, and they're supposed to be doing like the FBI. When the FBI goes after the mafia, what do they do? They put up a whiteboard. And they start at the top. They say, this is the ringleader. Or they start at the bottom and say, these are the operatives. These are the ones we know are in on it. And these are the ones that they answer to. So we know we got at least two levels built. Now we got to find out who the guys on the second level answer to. You got 10 guys on the first level. They answer the four dudes on the second level. The four dudes on the second level answer the two guys on the second level. And the two guys on the second level answer to the guy or woman at the top. And that then they know who to go after. They're not just random and aimless. They know who they're going after. And that's what should have happened in Baltimore tonight. If Ray Lewis were to come out to the microphones, he's retired, ain't he? Isn't Ray Lewis retired? I don't know much about football, y'all. I don't follow it like that. But Ray Lewis is retired, is he not? Yeah, he is. Well, what that means to me is this nigga ain't got nothing to lose. What does he have to lose? An endorsement deal? Not like he had a bunch of them. Another team contract? I don't think he wants to play anymore. What does he have to lose by coming out and speaking up for, up for other black men like himself and calling out Rawlings Blake and saying she's got to go and I'll put a million dollars on it, but she has got to go. What's he got to lose? But they sit silent. And what that really means is that him and the rest of them think that they've graduated beyond being black men, that they are somehow global citizens. And that they have 
some type of honorary white privilege. So they're not going to speak against the superstructure because in their minds, they have privilege within the superstructure until they get pulled over. Then they want to scream bloody murder. Then they want everyone to rally to their cause. Then they want everyone to come around them. And they haven't learned the lesson yet, brother. When this system is ready to come for your black ass, it's coming. It's coming. I'll let you have the last word. Well, once again, I don't think we're going to learn until it's too late, a lot of us. Um, quick question. What's going on with uh, Philly and Chicago? Uh, you know the, what? With the with the with the way things are going, man, we might be in Baltimore for God's sake. I don't. When things become apparent, I'll have more details on it. But let me tell you, the way things are rolling right now. But it's 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 it, it, it's the kind of thing that makes me think that man, I, I should have thought a lot further and a lot wider out, because once you get done rioting and everything else, now what? Because that's not a solution. That's a tactic, it's not a strategy. Once you get done doing that, what next? Because all the people who murdered Freddie Gray are still there. Stephanie Rawlings Blake is still there. The police uh, chief is still there. The cops that killed him are still there. The media that protects him, they're still there. What you gonna do about that? What you gonna do about it? Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Please do check in with us again. Let me see if we can get caller from 612. You're on live with the Black Channel. Oh, I'm just I'm just listening tonight, brother. I, don't, I really don't have nothing. Okay, nothing you need to press to number one here um, if you're just listening. All right, people, we need to get it together out there. That's why they give you prompts for that. Caller from 601, you're on live with the Black Channel. Hello? Yes, you're on live. You need to turn your speakers Hello? down. Hey, how you doing, brother? What's your name? Where are you calling uh, from? I wouldn't just... My name is Brother Chase. I'm calling from uh, Jackson, Mississippi. Okay, and brother, your phone is... Your I phone is... Uh, your phone ass. is a mess. You're, you're, you need to... Uh, I don't know if you're on speaker or, you know, if y'all just got one cell phone tower in the county, but sounds like you're talking to me from underwater. Can you hear me now? Okay. Um. Go ahead and uh, uh make your point. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I don't know if you're in a empty house or something, but you're echoing. But uh, go ahead and make your point. Yeah, uh, I got several questions. I need to know what the going on. Excuse my English. Uh, has anybody in, in Baltimore not launched any, any kind of inquiries or there not any committees dedicated to seeing what well, we know what the problem is. We, we need to start going after some people. I need some accountability. Well, I mean... In Baltimore, all over America. I'm trying to figure out what, what nobody is going to say nothing. Well, you get the government that you deserve in a lot of cases. And when black people as a group can sit up and talk about they are not going to hold Barack Obama accountable, not even call him out. You got academics and scholars talking about supporting this man. That filters down to the city level. That's the filters down to the street level. So nobody is holding these people accountable. Nobody is. Who's doing it? Apparently, nobody, and that's exactly the problem. And the thing is, you got a lot of us young folk who, what, what you're talking about, this has gone way over their head. They focused on on, on dancing and, and music and all this other kind of nonsense. These people are slaughtering them in the streets left and right with no regard. I mean, I, I go to, dude, Jason, you don't understand, I go to work. And when I talk about these things that you talk about on your show, over the internet, what's going on in the news, I'm looked at like a foreigner. I'm looked at like a pest. I'm looked at as if I'm imposing a burden on my people. And I don't understand it. I, 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 don't, I don't get this. This is foreign to me. The 
this this man was killed. You know what I'm saying? And it's not just him. We know about all the other instances, and all I'm seeing is Clooney. As far as Barack Obama is concerned, these big roles have been played ten times over. They've been hit with the three-card molly and don't even know it. The second this man sat up there and received uh, uh, instructions, and I know you remember it from the, uh, the, the group of Muslims that were gunned down by the white guy at the apartment complex, and he said he was personally looking to see if that was a hate crime, but you wouldn't do that for your own people? No, sir. No, sir. He should have lost your support then. That's a problem. Well, we as a people have not insisted on that kind of thing happening, so that's the reason that occurs. Well, thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Um, we do appreciate you listening in. Let me get caller from 513. You're on live with the Black Channel. Okay, caller from 513 has been abducted. Why do these things occur? Do you know that if you had radio and television 300 years ago, do you realize that black people would have, that we could pay, play broadcasts and radio segments and show you newspaper articles from three, 400 years ago that would sound exactly like what we're talking about tonight? No changes. No changes. There would be no changes to it whatsoever. They would all sound the same. They'd all sound the same. Because we keep repeating the same stupid pattern. Now, if you're not willing to accept the realities of why that occurs, just understand you're part of the problem. If you are unwilling to hold everybody who got us into this mess accountable, and that includes your parents, you are part of the problem. No, you're not part of it. You are the problem. You are the second civil rights generation. Do you know why you don't see any stories about Jews getting gunned down and shot in the back by police? The reason why they haven't had a second Holocaust is because they did not allow you to forget the first one. In Israel itself, they've got monuments to the Holocaust there. And basically a national day of mourning every year. Will someone please tell me where the national day of mourning is in black society? Will someone tell me where that is? Someone show me where the national day of mourning, the national monument is in black society. Because when you have something like that, you hold people accountable and responsible. Where is that in black society, I ask you? When you take a look at the events of Nuremberg... In 1946, you did not have a bunch of Jewish lawyers prosecuting the Nazis. You had Protestant Americans and Brits, but you did not have a bunch of Jewish lawyers prosecuting the Nazis. And Jewish people understood that nobody was going to look out for them except them. And from that day forward, in the legal field, they have always been represented and overrepresented as a demographic because they understand that if we don't have any representation in the courts, these people will do anything and everything to us. They did it once. And it took a world war to stop them. We ain't waiting to find out if they can do it again. Black people, on the other hand, are desirous to be the wards and bedwinches. 
and the concubines of white supremacy so we cripple our own children. You don't have to learn how to read. Mr. Charlie gonna take care of us. You don't have to learn how to run your own business. Mr. Charlie gonna give us a job. You don't have to learn how to build your own homes. Mr. Charlie didn't build one for us. Mr. Charlie, Mr. Charlie, Mr. Charlie gonna take care of us. Mr. Charlie, it's time for us to do away with and eliminate the Mr. Charlie niggas. All the Negroes who look up to white supremacy and have this daddy Oedipal complex, and I'm saying it like it is. Many of you in black society, you have a father figure Oedipal sexual complex with white supremacy. Like a child desirous to commit incest, you've got this desire that you're willing to kill all of the rest of us to fulfill. Oh, that upset a bunch of people. He's going too far now. He shouldn't say things like that. Oh, that's just horrible and terrible. And the people who are most saying those words, those are the people who are most doing it. Those are the people who are most doing it. I don't have a white daddy complex. I'm not looking to validate myself on somebody else's terms. And that bothers a lot of people, apparently. Because you feel like Negroes like me are getting in the way of you getting your shot. Shut up, Black Authority. Shut up, TBA. Who cares if Freddie Gray is dead? Who cares if the police snapped his back? Who cares what happened to Tamir Rice? Who cares what happened to Akai Gurley? Who cares what happened to Walter Scott? That's just collateral damage. Y'all are get y'all with this y'all with this black empowerment stuff. You getting in the way of me getting my shot. You in the way of me getting called up to the big leagues. Al Sharpton doesn't want to hear about black empowerment because that would be you getting in the way of him going to the big leagues. Common does not want to be a social activist. Common fooled you all into thinking he wanted to be a social activist rapper. In reality, he wants to be a, 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 an actor, an entertainer like Will Smith. And he used black people to get on the radar of white society. And if he agreed to sell us out, they would let him into Hollywood. And guess what? They've opened the door to let him into Hollywood. They're rewarding the house, niggas. Lee Daniels has sold his soul for 30 pieces of silver. And you want me to defend that? Damn that. They know that there are too many of us who are eager and anxious to destroy our people. And not enough of us who are willing to stand up and fight it. And that's why rioting and civil unrest does not work for black people. It doesn't work. It doesn't work for us because we have uprisings without any uplift. We do it with no purpose and no plan. No wonder it never works. Grab a few more phone calls here now. Let me get caller from 585. You're on live with the Black Channel. Yo, what's up, man? How you doing, though? What's your name? Where you calling from? Yeah, this, yeah, this is Caesar Stills. Um, I'm going to use my real name, Caesar McFadden. I'm, I'm in the chat right now. Black First Caesar, what's on your mind, brother? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I wanted to go back to that thing where you were saying um, that there'll never be another Holocaust because, you know, the Jews don't let, they don't let society forget about that, right? And then, you know, you get these white people that turn around and tell us, oh, well, y'all got to forget about slavery and forget about uh, the civil rights era, the Jim Crow era, and all that. We got to get a... Uh, get past that and move on 
But I always tell people, like, now nah, we can't just do that because the Jews don't do that. The Indians don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Now, people they have put pressure on them. By the way, up. people have put pressure on the Jews. Yeah. Did you all know that there was pressure yeah, on the yeah. Jews from 1947 forward? As far as the international community was concerned, they were like, hey, we had Nuremberg. We executed, you know, um, we executed... Uh, the Nazi leadership, you know, Goering died in custody, but, you know, we executed the Nazi leadership, the ones that were left, the ones we thought were yep. significant. We executed yeah. them. We got them. We got yeah. them. So everybody who was involved, the major, the major players, we basically killed them. We've done our job. Let's go home. And the Jews said, damn that. It wasn't just 20 guys. You yeah. only had 20 men at Nuremberg. It wasn't just 20 people. It was hundreds of them, thousands, millions in reality, because it was an entire nation that rose up against them. They said, "Hell no, we gotta get all of them. We want to get, uh, we want to get, um, uh, I'm forgetting the name off the top of my head, but we want to get Ehrlichman, we want to get Eichmann, we want to get, um, Mengele, we want to get Krauss, we want to get Strauss, we want to get all of them. We want to get every single yeah. one. And it was when the Jews grabbed Eichmann." That they let the international community know that Nuremberg might be over for you, but it's not over for us. You might be saying, yep, let yep. it go and forget about it, but we ain't forgetting a damn thing. And if you will not allow yeah, us right. to bring them back to Israel and put them on trial, we will simply kill them where they stand. But we ain't forgetting a damn thing. But understand, the international community has been trying to get them to let it go forever. And when they found out what the Mossad was doing, they weren't pleased about that. And the Jews said, damn you. You can forget about our Holocaust. Yeah. We ain't. So understand, other yeah. people have had folk try to put that pressure on them. The difference is they didn't knuckle under to it. And we did because the people who were pressuring us to forget, they said, if you'll just forget, Halle Berry will let you into our Hollywood. If you just forget, Lee Daniels will let you on the Fox. If you just forget, then uh, Charles Barkley will let you in the NBA and be an analyst, even though your mama mouth ass can't talk worth a damn. If you forget all of this, we'll throw you a cookie. And our people took it. That's the difference. That's why a, a fifth black holocaust, if you really want to be honest, that's why a fifth one could happen to us. You couldn't make a second one happen to the Jews, but you can make a fifth one happen to us because we are desirous to give up and surrender. Yeah. So, so what, do you, what do you think we got to do to get our people to really, really come together and be a nation instead of just, you know, we got these people in... Baltimore rioting, but let's be for real, they just doing that shit for, I'm so sorry, I don't mean to be cursing, they doing that for Facebook likes, you know what I'm saying? We yeah, got to get our people to to really come together as a nation and realize, hey, we all black first, just like you said, the Italians are Italian first, the Irish are Irish first, you know, I always say in every situation, I'm always black first. First and foremost, we have to have a code of conduct that will help us to build our economy. Yeah. We need an economy, but right now we are the most off-code people on the damn planet. The code is black Ooh. first. That is the rule number one and rule number Ooh. two. Black first. And what that means is that Ooh. we have got to understand that it is our blackness that identifies us. That is the core Ooh. central element of everything. Rule number two, we have got to, got to, got to, absolutely got to, Caesar, deal with this cancerous, acidic element within black society that seeks to bow down and uses all of these escapist mechanisms to, to enact that kind of cowardice. The people who are sitting up here yeah. and, 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 and talking about singing hymns when folk kill us. The people who sit up here and talk about, I'm not Lee Daniels, I don't need to talk about racism, I want to talk about homophobia. We have to deal with those people. The bedwinches and the coons and the professional sambos, we got to deal with those people. We cannot just sit up 
are condemning them and upset about them and complaining about them. We have got to deal with them. We have a cancer inside yeah. of black society. The fact that you could elect somebody like Stephanie Rawlings Blake, who was clearly against black people when running for re-election, I think it was last year. She was clearly against black people, clearly on the side of the police department against black people, and black people voted for her anyway. That tells you that there is a sickness and a disease in black society that says that we are comfortable and institutionalized in our victim status that has got to be rooted out and expelled in no uncertain terms by any means possible we've got to do everything to eliminate that from our system because that enemy from within is the reason that we cannot defeat the enemy from without because we don't know who's with us an individual can't do it alone an individual cannot defeat white supremacy by themselves. It takes a group to defeat white supremacy. And we can't make very much traction against white supremacy because when we come together as a group and say, okay, let's march, we don't know how many of us are actually really with us. Yeah, yeah. We don't know who's here to sell out. We don't know who's here to make a record, Elaine Brown. We don't know who's here to get on TV, Angela Davis. We don't know who's here to get a television contract, Stephen A. Smith, Charles Barkley. We don't know who's here to sell their souls to the corporate conglomerates, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, Lee Daniels. We don't know who's actually with us because we are not insisting that people declare their allegiance. So brother, first and foremost, it is black first. And everybody has, you in your personal life, have to start demanding that the people around you declare their allegiance. And if they refuse to do so, when you hook up with other people, we have to have an enemies list. I'm saying it. The United States has got their enemies list. They call it a terrorist watch list. The Jews yeah, yeah. have got theirs. The Russians got theirs. The Brits got theirs. Damn it, black people should have one before anybody. We need to know who is with us. Because when you go with Jewish people, when you go to any city in America where you find Jewish people, the first thing they do after exchanging their pleasantries, when you talk about setting up shop, the first thing they let you do know is who all the anti-Semites are in their city. They let you know who their enemies are. So before you get wrapped up with somebody you can get taken advantage of, they let you know that that guy over there is against us and we know it now we ain't coming out publicly because if we did that then the rest of his kind would go underground so we want to leave him in place because we know he's a bad dude and the folk that he most supports and that most support him we know that they're with him we know who our enemies are black people do not well first of all we don't actually know who our enemies are, and even the ones that we do know, we're, uh, we're, we, we, we refuse to confront them. We refuse to confront our Ooh. enemies on the inside. And I'm saying that y'all need to have enough of that. That's why we brought Coon back in the style. Yeah. Yeah. That was why people like me and, and Tariq and other people brought the word Coon back into the lexicon. We brought Buffoon and back into the lexicon. We brought Sambo back into the lexicon. We brought it back because we wanted to identify who our enemies are and those words let you know who they are and why they're the enemy. So you have to start doing that in your daily life. The last thing you need to do is get your money together. You are weak and powerless and impotent in this world if you are poor. Poor people are the people with a poor economy are victims of people with a rich economy. That's just the way it is. People with a fully developed economy take advantage of people with a poorly developed economy. And as long as you are poor, the, the people with more money than you can do anything you they want to do. So that's the last thing you got to get taken care of. If you want to get rid of Stephanie Rawlings Blake, you have to do it through the, the bank. You got an echo going on there with you here, so I'm going to go ahead and... uh. Give you a minute to get that taken care of, but thank you very much for giving us a call. Let me get caller from 816. You're on live with the Black Channel. Caller from 816. Last try. You're on live with the Black Channel. Okay, caller from 816 has been abducted.
And one more time for you here, because I had to post that up again. The number is 646-787-1933. 646-787-1933 is your personal access code to the Blackest Radio Program in existence. The only place for sanity tonight. You're not hearing a bunch of pie-in-the-sky, fictional, fantasy, make-believe, hocus-pocus, idiotic nonsense answers. You're not hearing anything like that. You are hearing real and concrete answers about what you can actually do to actually make these things happen. That's what you can do. As black people, we have been led by our failures and our frauds. When you have people physically attacking you and somebody else comes up to you with an answer that is not physical, that person has declared themselves an enemy. They've declared themselves an enemy. When you've got your pastors, your preachers, your teachers, your parents telling you that the answer to a physical threat from the police is to bow down and be quiet and march and peacefully protest, they are telling you that you are the enemy. When other people wanted to take the, take other people to task for what they did to them, they came out with their dollars and their guns. And as black people, we are trying to enact intangible, fictitious solutions to physical problems. That will not work. Never. It will never work. If you are in Baltimore tonight and within the sound of my voice, understand a state of emergency ain't no damn joke. They call it a state of emergency to avoid calling it what it actually is. Martial law. That is what a state of emergency declared because of civil unrest actually is. The governor is declaring martial law. That he will be running his place in an extra constitutional fashion. And as, as Tariq explained to Jesse Lee Peterson's dumb mumble mouth ass. That they hold their power with their military might. Did you notice that when black folk want to protest. We send in the preachers. We send in the reverends. We send in the bed wenches and the buck dancing politicians. Do you notice that when white supremacy wants to exert its power, they don't send in their clergy. You ever notice that? White supremacy doesn't send in their politicians. They don't send in their preachers and their reverends when they want to deal with you. When they want to deal with you, they send in their money and their guns. That's what they send in. They send their money and their guns in. That's the modus operandi. As black people, if you don't understand what that means at this late date, you will not get it. We've been playing a game with people who ain't playing with us. They killed Freddie Gray and said, oh well, ho-hum. Them's the breaks. Baltimore has had... It's Amadou Diallo moment. They've had theirs now. Baltimore has had its day of reckoning. The Baltimore Police Department is letting you know they got the game locked down. We got the cops, we got the judges, we got your black politician. Your mayor is in our pocket. And what they the only thing they're waiting to see is if you're going to take action against that. 
So don't expect me to sit up here and go on this great big uh, brouhaha where I congratulate you for a few broken windows. I'm not congratulating that anymore. I'm not going to give you any props or kudos for that. That doesn't work. It doesn't work. And most of you out there doing it are doing it for insincere reasons. You're doing it because you know that you can get on TV. You're doing it because you know that you can get watched by somebody for saying that. But you're not doing it for sincere reasons. You're doing it because that's how attention whoring works. And if black people were as concerned about having power, wealth, and influence as they are about being on the damn 6 o'clock news, we'd be making a difference. If you're listening to this broadcast tonight, that is because you are looking for black leadership. You are looking to see where black people are actually getting something done. That's why you're listening. You're listening here because you understand that. Because you don't have any black leadership right now. In Baltimore, you don't have any. If you did, Stephanie Rawlings Blake would be impeached. If you had that, it would get Im they, she would be impeached. But that's not what's happening. Instead, what's happening is that black people are sitting up here deciding that, hey, let's just go show out. For those of you who are younger black people, the methodology of marching and protesting and public demonstration is the tactics of cowards and liars. Your parents were cowards and liars. And now they're teaching you to be cowards and liars. When you get done protesting and breaking windows and whatnot, now what comes next? Because the problem is you cannot break a window except once. You can't set a car on fire except once. You can't burn down a business except once. You can't throw the same rock more than once unless you go pick it up again. You can only do those things one time. And then what? Then what? You are falling for the lie that if you get out there and disrupt the city, that if you stand in the streets and quote, disrupt the city that that's gonna work and Ferguson showed you that you can quote disrupt the city for days or even weeks and that won't work it has never worked which is why they keep telling you that lie They keep telling you that because they understand that black people are easily placated. Because they know that we don't actually want to confront them. Every time that you see people saying that Walter Scott got gunned down and he shouldn't have run, that is a right, white supremacist race warrior who is telling you that he knows the war is on. And that that is what he actually wants. The white supremacists of America, and they are strong in the population, they want a all-out race war. They have always wanted that because they see emancipation as the unfinished business of slavery. And that is what they truly want, is to assert their national dominance at the barrel of the gun. 
And they believe that your children will simply lay down for it. Or that they may have to bust a few heads. But they don't need you anymore. Black people get this through your heads. Integration is a failure. Se desegregation was a failure. Assimilation was a failure. Trying to appeal to moral consciences was a failure. It has failed. And only the cowardly are still trying to invoke those things as if, well, if we resurrect this dead horse, it'll get up and carry us. The horse is dead. It's rotting. You can see its decayed flesh in its rib cage bursting out from it. Its innards are spilled all over the place. It's over. Damn a post-racial society. President Sambo Obama. We are in a post-integrationist society. I am putting the damn tombstone on integration. It has failed. It was a lie. And its entire purpose for being was to placate all of you and to make you sit still as they sacrifice your sons and daughters. Now you have... 50 years later, you've got no socioeconomic power. You've got no livable communities. You've got, well, not even really one real true community in America. You don't have any of it. But they've told you that you do. They've convinced you that you have it. They've convinced you that being able to shop at Walmart is freedom. They've convinced you that being able to shop at Starbucks is freedom. They've convinced you that getting a pair of shoes and a cell phone that you bought from them at outrageously inflated prices, that that is freedom, justice, liberation, and equality. And it is not. Now I want to know tonight who is accepting that condition, that sorry, pathetic state of being. Which ones are you accepting it? Who out there is accepting this with a smile on face? Who out there is still accepting this? I'm letting you all know now. Do you see how they're dealing with these events when they happen? Do you see what they're doing to you? How they're dealing with this? They go out there and kill you. And then when you say something about it, they send the National Guard in. So eventually what will happen is you will just see yourselves get killed every week under every single conceivable circumstance and eventually you won't even do that anymore. They know what they're doing. They're trying to knuckle you under. But they know what they're doing. Freddie Gray wasn't killed the way he was by accident. They did it because they know the white supremacists on that police department and Stephanie Rawlings Blake, they are all on the same team. Eric Holder and Darren Wilson and Bob McCulloch all on the same team. And now Loretta Lynch, the first black bedwinch appointed to be Attorney General of the United States, Loretta Lynch, a more apropos name for an apparatchik of white supremacy I couldn't conjure up myself. And the name itself, she sounds like she's pre-named for porn or bedwinching, whichever you prefer. Loretta Lynch has already stated that she sees her top priority. Go look it up. Don't believe me. Loretta Lynch has already stated as soon as the ink was, was on the paper, for approving her as Attorney General, she stated that her top priority is restoring the morale of the police departments around America. No, don't believe me. Go look it up for yourselves. She said that her number one job she sees as her top priority is to reestablish 
the morale of police departments around America as she steps over the dead bodies of Walter Scott, Freddie Gray, and all the rest of us. White supremacy is waiting to see if you're going to have an actual concrete answer to them. I want a final solution to white supremacy. A final solution. And we will not get that solution by marching, protesting, or even rioting. That will not be the solution. They are waiting to see not when you aggregate your numbers in the streets. They want to see when you aggregate your numbers with dollars. Because the road to freedom does not go by the church house or the schoolhouse. It does not go by the church building or the school building or the administrative building or the city hall building. The road to freedom goes by the bank building. It goes by the bank. And if your plans do are not centered upon and, 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 and founded upon your money, you ain't got no plan. You're not going to deal the death blow to white supremacy with anything other than your money. And they're not afraid of you. They are not afraid of you until they see your dollars aggregating. When they see your dollars starting to aggregate, then they're going to start getting scared. When they see black people aggregating their money and their wealth, then they're going to start getting scared. Because they know that once you got money in place, you can buy schools, you can buy politicians, you can buy civic organizations, you can buy defensive weaponry, you can buy teachers, you can buy lawyers, you can buy judges. When you got your money on point, you can start inflicting your will. That's what they're looking for. That will be the switch that flips that lets them know, oh hell, all hell done broke loose. The niggers done finally figured it out. They have finally started gathering their money. Because once you got your money together, imagine if black folk in Baltimore, Stephanie Rawlings Blake, I talked about this on the pre broadcast here, uh, two broadcasts ago. This woman spent $350,000 running for mayor in Baltimore. $350,000, that's all. $350,000 got you all a black female white supremacist. A black female who gets a phone call every morning from her white masters telling her what to do. That's what they have right now. But everything else you're trying to do does not work. And it doesn't work because you can't move a police department without money. You can't move corrupt politicians without money. You can't remove corrupt media figures without money. You have got to get that together. And since you're black, bald, the people who do have the millions, your black athletes, they are the employees of your enemies. You have got to do what's necessary to get the money together yourselves since you can't count on them. Y you can't count on them. But brothers and sisters, if we're not willing to take that first crucial step, forget about it. Forget about it. Now, let me tell you how things are going to go down in Baltimore. You're going to see your black clergy try to come walk out there. And they're probably going to get short-circuited this time. But understand, white supremacy done got smart to you. White supremacy has done got clever to you. White supremacy knows what you're doing now. And they're here to intercept the revolution. So what you're going to do is you're probably going to see some of those Black Lives Matter government agents start showing up now. The Black Lives Matter agent provocateurs are going to start showing up. 
They're going to start showing up and they're going to tell you to do anything and everything except build an economy. They ain't going to tell you that one. They're going to tell you to do anything and everything except fight white supremacy. They're not going to tell you that one. They're going to tell you more marching, more protesting. They're going to tell you that you need to beg more, sambo more. They're going to tell you that you need to be out there in the streets more. Black folk, get the hell out them streets. You ain't accomplishing nothing. Get out of the streets and five or six of you need to get together and say, okay, these people done declare war on us. We're going to spend the next year getting our war chest together to go to war against them. We're going to get this black Wall Street action popping. We're going to get this black economy cracking off. And once we got that, we're going to start removing people one way or the other. But they're out of here. Next, you're going to see the news media come in. I guess they're already there. They're going to find the biggest coons and sambos that they can and say that those people represent the people. Then they're going to look around, see if they can find anybody who's actually building anything. That guy's dangerous. Got to ignore him. You're going to start seeing some rappers and actors start showing up in Baltimore. Photo op time. But they're not going to come in telling you about building an economy is the key to freedom. And they're not going to do nothing to make it happen either. You're going to see some of your black politicians start talking around the edges, but none of your black politicians in Baltimore are going to challenge Rawlings Blake at all. None of them. None of them are going to call for her ouster. None of them. They want to know if you are going to sit back and accept those trinkets. This is for your benefit. This is a show in theater for your benefit. But we've seen this playbook before. And now they just want to see if you're going to accept it again. Caller from 404. You're on live with the Black Channel. Okay, we're going to lay off on that for a little while since uh, the white supremacists are calling in and checking to see if we're here. Yes, the black channel is here. Yes, we are not afraid to confront you. Yes, we are ready to take you on. But the majority of black society is not, and that's why these people are doing what they're doing. The majority of black society is not prepared. And your enemies can see how broken and disorganized you actually are. Do you all think that they didn't know that this would happen? Do you all think they didn't know that? Brothers and sisters, you don't have a black leadership unless you got money. And too many of you, too many of us are waiting for somebody else to get their money together and that's saviorism. Too many of us are engaging in that. Looking for somebody else to come running up and jumping up and give us what we need. And whoever gave you your power, that's the person who has the ability to give it, to, to take it away. 
The people that you are dependent upon for what you need, those are the people who can give it away. And that's why you can't depend on anybody else to do that for you but you. Nobody else can be responsible for that. Because everybody who is, those are all the people who can take it from you. All of them. All of you. Probably going to wrap this up here in a few minutes, but I'll see about taking one more phone call here, I guess. Let me get caller from 856. You're on live with the Black Channel. Black First TBA, this is, this is Kyle calling from Northern Virginia. Kyle in Northern Virginia, what's on your mind? What you're saying is absolutely correct. Um, we can only save ourselves. And it starts with getting our money together. And another thing I don't understand is, like, we're out here protesting and marching, but the thing is, it's like it, it happens over and over and over again. It's like the definition of insanity, like doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Nothing else is going to happen. All they're going to do is all the white supremacists are going to do is send out their stormtroopers with their guns ready because they know that they want this. They want our blood to be running in the streets. And it's like, we have to get like, we as black folk got to get smarter and more sophisticated about it and look at what's going on and say, you know what, this isn't, this isn't working. We got to get our money together. We got to, we got to make things happen on an economic level. Well, that's difficult to do when you're looking for somebody else to step in and take care of you. That's hard to do. As black people, we're waiting on somebody else to do the hard work of, of, of taking care of our needs for us. So, of course, we're sitting here waiting for someone else to do that. But that's we're, we're, we're trying to figure out. We are trying to figure out how we can get somebody else to pay our dime to freedom. And that's why I put up the stories and articles. That's why I went and got the documentation from the various states to show you all. I mean, with Stephanie Rawlings Blake, I didn't argue with that heifer. I did not argue or nothing with her. I said, let me find out how much money you got, Wank, so we can get you out of there. I, don't, I didn't come to argue with you. I came to inflict my will. $350,000, that's what you spent. So that just tells us the ballpark of what we would need to spend. If you yeah, want freedom. Is like most Oh, the, the the thing about most of these small municipalities is that, like, it really does not cost a whole lot of money to run for office. I mean, in my old hometown, you can get in the office for less than $1,000. All you need to do is just have enough people on the streets to put you out there. But other than that, like, you can definitely take a small town for under $5,000. It's not that hard. And I keep telling people that it's your local elections that are the most important and not the national, because at least with your local elections, you can actually knock on the person's door and say, hey, what's up? I don't like what you're doing. Because they affect you more directly. You know, they're, they're supposed to be, quote unquote, your neighbors. Well, I mean, in, in the cases of local elections, first of all, that's where the killings are taking place. All these idiots and clowns, your psycho conspiracy theorists, Alex Jones has been completely debunked and discredited at this point. Too bad there were so many black folk who fell for him. But he was pointing you at the federal government. The feds ain't killing nobody. The feds are locking up a bunch of people. It's not... Uh, Michael Slager did not work for the federal government. Darren Wilson did not work for the federal government. Daniel Pantaleo did not work for the federal government. Those people did not work for the federal government. They worked at your local city level. And that is who the federal government has outsourced the annihilation of black people to. That is who they have outsourced Jim Crow 2.0 to. It's been outsourced to them. 
They've made it their job to take care of that. So it's your local police that are going after you. It's your local politicians who are doing the dirty work. And black people don't want to deal with that. And I've shown you all time and again, from Ferguson to, to, to Sanford to New York, now to Baltimore. Brother, in most of these places here, the, the uh, winning amounts are not millions or thousands. In some cases, in a lot of these cases, less than $10,000. Even right here in my town, which kind of surprised the hell out of me. The mayor's race was expensive, but for the city council seats, there were three of them that spent less than $10,000. Well, two of them definitely spent less than $10,000. Now, what's to yeah, stop fo black sure. folk from doing that in Baltimore? You ought to have a city council. It should be stacked and packed with black folk of some intelligence and empowerment, and they should basically neuter the mayor. Due to her, what the state government did to the uh, city governments in Michigan. Make it where Rawlings Blake cannot pass anything. As a matter of fact, if I were running things, I'd be preparing articles of impeachment. But, as it stands, black folk are sitting back and waiting for other people to take charge of it. Because we're so accustomed to being the wards of white supremacy, to being the wards of the state, that the idea that we are supposed to be the big money brokers, that doesn't register to us. And that just has a difference of ambition. When white men say my goal is to run the city and black folks say my goal is to buy a new car. Police. The crazy thing is, like what we don't realize is like for our city councils, usually it's an odd number. Say like about, it can range anywhere from like five to seven to nine members. I mean, say if your city council has only nine members, all you need are five that's it just five people all you need is a block of five and you automatically have the majority you can run rough shot five people that's it or better yet if it's seven people all you need is or what like four <laughs> the majority that's it it's beautiful but and for most of these city and town councils they really do not cost that much to like really take them over you know for, in ferguson uh, i can give i was the person who yeah. showed you all the documents from ferguson i told you what the city councilman spent and you got uh ella jones she she brought in uh she brought in a thirteen thousand dollars and ultimately only wound up spending about 1400 of it so she went back home with like eleven thousand dollars and some change she wound up at the end You're of that election. She raised thirteen thousand dollars, and she only had to spend a little over a thousand, and she won her seat in Ferguson. Um, Bell, he's the black fellow who won his seat in Ferguson. I think he spent a little over two thousand dollars. So you mean to tell me? Let me get straight now, okay? You mean to tell me that Mike Brown is dead? Because black folk didn't want to spend $5,000. That's essentially what you're telling me. Mike Brown is dead Pretty because much. black folk didn't want to spend $5,000. Because that's about what you would have, on that average, that's what you would have had to spend to have a majority on the city council. Mike Brown is dead, and they've been killing and hurting black folk there forever because black folk refused to spend $5,000. But the churches are full. The churches are huge. The pastor is driving something big, shiny, and brand new in German. The rims are hitting. The hair weaves are gleaming. And the, and, 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 and the shoes are on fleek. Eyebrows, whatever. And you could be killed at any moment. Our priorities are really jacked up, and we need to get them straight. It's 2015. It has to be done this year. You know what? At I mean, the beginning of the 20th century, right after slavery, at the beginning of the 20th century, you had sundown towns. 
You know what we need in America? Right. We need some black towns okay. is what we need. You had sundown towns? We need some black towns. We need some black towns. We need some places where black folk aggregate their power, wealth, and influence, and you'd be damned if you'd step near it. That's what we need. That is totally doable. Well, it's doable except for the people who say I'm a black feminist. Now, it's <laughs> not doable to them. It's doable except to the I'm not black, I'm an American. It is, it's doable except to them. It's doable except to all the coons and clowns in professional sports, since they don't see themselves as black. It's doable for everybody except them. It's doable for everybody well, except the modern-day black politician and the black preacher. It's doable except for everybody except like them. We don't need them, then. We really don't. I can do without them. I'm good. And I'm pretty sure you can also. And once they see that and say, you know, it's doable, it can happen. And once it starts happening, they're going to look at us and start running over to our side. And what's going to happen is we're going to ask them, okay, where were you guys at when we were getting shot up? Where were you guys at when the boot was on our neck? Well, I mean, if you want to punish, have to be accountable. if you want to hold people accountable, brother, if you want to punish people for cowardice, cooning and butt dancing, you got to have an economic infrastructure in place to do that. You have got to. You can't punish somebody if you're a pauper. You can be mad. You can be frustrated. You can be that Negro did me wrong, but you can't do nothing to him. As long as you don't have resources, you can't punish anybody. So that is going to come first. First, we understand these folks need to be punished. That's part of the code of conduct. But then you got to get resources so the punishing can get rolling. Got to do it. I'll let you have the last word. Black First TVA. And thank you for everything. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Do check in with us again. I got a little bit of extra time. I'll see if I can take another call here. Let me get a caller from 770. You're on live with the Black Channel. Caller from 770. You're on live. Okay, they are wringing their hands over there. Caller from 703. You're on live with the Black Channel. Hey, how's it going? This is uh, Diesel out of Northern Virginia. Okay, your phone is in and out on you here. If you're on speaker, you probably want to take it off. Yeah, I had your speaker, bro. That's my bad. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, this was a good message tonight. I've been uh, going back and forth with a lot of people on Facebook because they're, uh, you know, the same old how they covered the Ferguson riots and everything like that. Well, not riots, but protests and everything like, like that. Like they're a riot. But still won't call it the white kids like you brought up. Okay. Was that was that what you wanted to tell us? Well, I mean, main thing, but uh, I was told to call in a couple of days ago. <laughs> okay. Sounds like you're having yeah, a giggling. Well, sounds like you're having a giggling issue. No, nah, it's a no. Nah. No, it's a what? What's up? I said, it sounds like you're having a giggling issue. What's so funny? Nothing, really. Just uh, trying to trying to calm down. That's it. Trying to calm down. Yeah. How old are you? Twenty-six. You're twenty-six years old. You said you live in yeah. Northern Virginia. That means you're not far yeah. from Baltimore. Correct. Where is your father? You're not sure. Actually, at work right now. Yeah. At work not, right now. You're not sure. How many siblings do you have? Uh, four of them. Yeah. Your mom was a brood mare. 
Yeah. In a situation like this, and you think there's something funny going on. You think there's something to giggle about. Of course, when Not the police me. pull up, and when your number comes up, and they wind up doing something to you, then you won't be laughing then. If you want to know why they feel like okay. they got carte blanche to kill us, it's because we keep encountering individuals like you who can't be serious when their own lives are on the line. And maybe that's what we need. Maybe we need just evolution to take its course and remove the people who are not serious about this. Black males have a bad habit of wanting to be the damn class clown. Bad habit of that. Real, real bad habit. And for somebody 26 years old, in the situation and the subject matter we're discussing tonight, and somehow you found levity somewhere, I'm just really stunned right now. You found some levity. You can think that, but I'm definitely... I okay, I got you recorded. It's not what I think. I got you recorded. So I'm just making it up that you're sitting on my phone giggling? It's a habit I have. It's a habit you have. You know what? I've, I've met some chicks who said that they couldn't stop sleeping around. It was just a habit. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you go reflect on that for a while? Cool. You all wonder why white supremacy is on the march. You wonder why they're on a rampage. You wonder why they kill us willy-nilly. You wonder why the white males of the 21st century are murdering the black males like him. You want to know why that keeps happening? You just heard it. That was the attitude of the average black male today. That was it right there. He's 26 years old and he is no more prepared for adulthood than you are prepared to fly to the moon by flapping your arms. That was it right there. And if the police rolled up on him, he'd be standing there with both of his feet together looking all sheepish, staring up at him. Yes, sir, officer. Uh, no, sir, officer. Uh, no, sir. Uh, I was just going home, sir. You think we're going to be able to go into battle with that? Do you think what was just on my phone is going to help us build a black economy? You think that's going to... Did you hear the type of steel discipline necessary? To take on white supremacy? Is that what you just heard? Was that what you think you just heard? Yeah. And he's right up there where it's happening. No wonder they're out there in the streets dancing and jigabooning. No wonder the Black Lives Matter sluts are going to be able to run up there with their lesbian agenda. And Negroes like him would be like, damn, man, if one of them hoes let me lay up, hey, black lives, green lives, purple lives, man, any lives. Hey, 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 Whatever they selling, I'm buying. Hey, 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 hey. And what if the police roll up behind you? Man, I'm going to just break out running. Walter Scott broke out running too. Yeah, man, you show sure right. Too many black males are trying to be the damn class clown to the world. And even when they got guns pointed at our heads, Negroes are still being the class clown. The black males are trying to be the class clown. The black females are trying to be the town slut. And thinking that either one of those tactics is going to get you a pass from white supremacy breaking you off. And it ain't. 
It's not going to work. Caller from 901, you're on live with a black channel with a bunch of noise. Hello? Yes, you're on live. Um, yes, my name is Siobhan. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. And this is my first time listening to your show. Okay, is this and my Facebook friend, I'm just Siobhan? Now... Sir? Are you my Facebook friend, Siobhan, from Facebook? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, I just wanted to make sure. What's on your mind, sister? This is your first time listening in. Um, yes. Yes, this is my first time being introduced to your show. I just got into, you know, being awakened of what's going on. Okay. And I've been watching Hidden Colors and, you know, trying to, you know, I need guidance on, you know, what I need to do for myself, you know, as a black woman. And this stuff that is going on today. Okay. My parents, they're lost. I, I can't get anything from them. They're lost. Look what they got me at. You know, um So I do I think I can mm -hmm. I think I can say this. First of all, Siobhan, you've been following me for months and months now. I can't believe this is the first time you ever listened in, my God. No, no, this is my this is my first time ever following you. I just started following you. I think it was yesterday. Oh, okay. I thought it was somebody. I, I thought you, you, I about to say if you, I thought you were another Siobhan. I was like, say she's been following me for months. I know full damn well she's been listening to me. <laughs> um, first of all, how old are you? I'm twenty. Okay, what city are you in? Memphis. Okay, you're in the bastard baby capital of America. Yes, sir. Do you have any kids? No, none. First of all, don't do the first stupid thing you could possibly do. Do not get pregnant. You got a bunch of loser, busted hoes around you, and they're going to encourage you to be a yes. busted loser hoe with them because they want you to lose opportunities just like they've lost them. They don't want you being right. able to look down at them, so they want you to mess up like them so that you are all in the same boat. So first order of business, uh, no kids. That would be the dumbest thing you could possibly do. Your parents are lost, which means they don't give a damn if you get pregnant either. And you said parents plural, so I'm assuming that you know your father. You grew up with your father and your dad and mother. Um, I did. As a, in a young age, uh, my mother and my father got divorced, and my daddy. I mean, he's nothing. Never been in my life. Never did anything for me. So he's out of the question. My mom, I really don't have a connection with her like she does with my older sister. And all of my life, you know, with my family, I've always been put down, saying I'm not smart enough to do this. You know, I've, you know, I've just been enslaved in my mind to this fake world that's going on. And I'm just now being, you know, woken up to stuff that my parents and my grandparents should have did for me a long time ago. First of all, understand something, okay? You are 20 years old. Mm -hmm. You're a millennial. Your parents sold you down the river. And if you want proof mm -hmm. of that, if you want absolute proof of that, I have a little test that I tell everybody who wants to argue with me that their parents sold them down the river. The first thing I ask them is, what are your parents passing down to you? Nothing at all. If your mom and dad drop dead tonight, tell me, what are you going to be getting from them? Nothing. Not nothing a, at all. Not a house. Not one. Not one thing. Nothing. Then what? Now understand something. Do you know the reason why you get things in your life? Do you know the reason why you build monuments? Because that is the only proof that you ever actually existed. Without those things, you don't actually, can't actually prove that you ever actually lived. You can say things, but you can't prove it. That's why you have to build things in your life, because without them, you never existed at all. And your parents, if they dropped dead tonight, it would be the same as if they never actually even lived. I guess in some ways that'd be a good thing. I guess in some ways that would actually be preferable. 
Now, the other thing is, um, do you realize that they've actually put you at a tremendous financial disadvantage in a world that runs on money? It'd be different if money was yeah. optional, but we live in a world, and you know this at 20, the world runs on money. And they've sent you out into yeah. the world. They didn't have they didn't have a problem doing the bump boogie and bringing you in this world, but they didn't give you nothing to go into this world with. Nothing at all. I'm, I'm out here by myself. Now the I have nobody on the same mind level as me. Like I, I want better. And it's I mean my my, my the people, I'm telling you, you can't get through them. You cannot get through to these black people out here because they're so conditioned to one thing. They don't want to change. And like where this world going to, it's gonna be a lot of people out here lost. And I don't wanna be one of them. Here's the way it goes, okay? I want to be one of them. Siobhan, here's the way it happens. When you want to mm -hmm. annihilate a people, what you do is you slowly, slowly maneuver those people into a helpless, hapless position. Do you know that from 1492 when Columbus showed up to the 1500s when the first pilgrims showed up, do you realize that it was another 300 years before whites wholesale started wiping the Native Americans out? Do you all realize that? That it was another two to three hundred years before the Trail of Tears and before the Indian Wars that drilled them down to only a, fra a percentage of their former population. They were willing to, they had a 200 to 300 year stratagem in place. That's not no joke, Siobhan. And they slowly maneuvered the Indians. They came to their parties. They took care of their kids, or more the point, let them take care of their kids. They did trade with them. They grew tobacco. They made lots of money. They enslaved a bunch of black folk. And then when the late seven, when the 1800s hit, it was off to the races, wiping them out. So they slowly started off slowly maneuvering them into a helpless position. And then one day they let the ripcord go. And everything hit the Indians so fast that they, did, they, they weren't able to react. And that's what's happened to black folk in Memphis. They have been lulled into a helpless condition. And now all white supremacy has to do is make a massive swerve and it's over. They're not going to be able to. Hurricane Katrina showed you all what a massive swerve would do. You had an entire city full of black people. And half the inhabitants of that city found themselves stranded and helpless and starving to death. And, Hello. And I ask you, what's to prevent them from doing that again? Now, the next thing I, I always ask people is, have you ever asked your parents to show you some pictures of them when they were younger? Yeah, I have. What, what did they wear? What, what were they dressed like? Um, like, some would be like uh, clothing that was too big for them, looked like hand-me-downs. Hand-me-down clothing, torn some. No, that's not what I'm referring to. You go get, you go ask your mom and your dad if you can find them. You go ask them for some pictures of them in their twenties, when they were about your okay. age and older, and go find out what they were wearing. Siobhan, I guarantee you, your mama is gonna show you some slinky evening dress. Or in her case, maybe some tight booty dress. I don't know. And she's going to be talking about how cute she was and how all the dudes were checking for her and how hot she was and everything else. Watch. It always happens the same way. And she's, if she has any pictures of your dad, he's going to be wearing some snakeskin gaiters or depending on how old he is, some Nikes or whatever. They, they're going to show you some club pictures. She's going to be talking about how all the other females wanted him. And she was just so fantastic and attractive. She was the only one who could get him. And then later it'll be that nigga ain't no good. But you take her on a trip down memory lane and listen to how some of those answers went. And then I want you to understand that is where your inheritance went. She spent your inheritance. 
And now she's telling you, go figure it out. You go make a way on your own. Go figure it out. You're young, Siobhan, but there's hope for you. If you are not a member of my Facebook group, the official Jason Black group, you need to be. You will meet other kindred souls. You'll meet other women, young women like yourself in their 20s who have likewise been sold down the river and are ready to make a change. You'll be around people who can actually help you. Your life is aimless today because your parents did not build an economic base for you in a world that runs on money. You've met a bunch of black people that that's all we do because we understand that's what's going to set you free. We will help you to be able to do that. First of all, by realizing what you need to do. And second of all, that helps put everything else in place. Not a bunch of giggling, hee hee, ha ha. We deal with social issues, but first and foremost, we are about understanding that economy is what's going to get us out of this. So you are in the right place. So if you're not, if you may be on my friends list, but if you're, if, if you're not a member of that group page, send me a request for it. I'll go ahead and approve it. And we want to add you to it because you need to be indoctrinated and engulfed and, 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 and flooded with black people who are serious and sensible at this critical juncture in your life. You need that now more than ever. So don't, don't put a bunch of distance between you and us. You need to be over here. Because you ain't got nothing over there. I'm not over speaking it. Real life. We all we got. I'll let you have the last word. I just want to thank you so much for the information. I will be joining the page. And I'm just ready for the change for myself. And to be enclosed around these people is going to help me get there as well and i thank you so much for letting me talk to you and giving me all the advice that i need thank you very much for joining us here tonight please do call us again all right uh five minutes let me get caller from 612 okay maybe not let me see do i have time to take another one hmm. We have a bunch of young black people who are out here today, aimless and listless. And you know that she's on that East Coast also, by the way. A bunch of young black people who are aimless and listless and are desperate to make something happen. They want something to occur. They know they've been sold down the river. They know they don't have anything to call on. And they know that their parents have sent them out into the world to go play by whorehouse rules. Telling their sons to be class clowns and their daughters, well, let me just show you how to be a bed wench. You will find somebody to give sexual favors to. And that's not a strategy. That's not a plan. Baltimore is on fire tonight, but Baltimore is not going to do you any good. What we're witnessing tonight in Baltimore is pointless. It is absolutely pointless and futile because it will not be followed up with the necessary socioeconomic revolution. White supremacy knows the black playbook now. They realize what we're doing. Every police department in America is now making a Ferguson contingency since they now know that killing black people may be met with some civil unrest with some civil demonstrations but they know that these are immature acts of, of, of attention whoring I'm telling you let's take it all the way no more stutter steps no more quarter measures no more half measures let's take it all the damn way Let's get the power and the wealth and the influence. Let's get an enemies list. Let's get a code of conduct. Let's get an economy and let's start neutralizing our enemies. There ain't no other way. 
This fight ain't gonna be one in the streets. It's gonna be one at the bank. Or it will be lost at the bank and then in the streets. But you ain't ready to take on white supremacy in the streets because you haven't been to the bank yet. And until you get ready to go there, nothing else happens. Absolutely nothing else is going to get accomplished if you aren't going to the bank. A bunch of poor folks out there in the streets throwing rocks like the Palestinians. I got a question. The Palestinians might be courageous, but tell me. In 60 damn years, how much progress have they made against the Israelis with their rabid rock throwing? How much progress against the Israeli government have the Palestinians made with all that throwing rocks they're doing? All the public demonstrations, all the marching, all the protesting. All the getting upset and Molotov cocktails. Tell me how much progress they've made. White supremacy has maneuvered black people into a textbook. Uh, blocked us off into a dead end. They marched us off into a cul-de-sac. Where now you're trapped and you only got one response. You can have a civil unrest, but now they just see that as boxing you in and trapping you in so that it can corner you in so you can blow off steam and that's it. But at the end of the day, there are no changes that come out of it. In Ferguson, there were some half measures. You should have recalled the mayor and the rest of those white supremacists on the city council and all of them should have been out. Half measures ain't gonna work. Being in love with being seen on Twitter and Facebook ain't gonna work. Trying to get on TV ain't gonna work. I would rather see all those black people just get up and go home. And then put into place a plan that is gonna get you free and start working on building businesses. Because attention whoring ain't where it's at. Caller from 832, you're on live with the Black Channel. Turn down your speakers. Good not, good evening, uh, Jason Black. This is Omekian Descendant. Omekian, haven't heard from you in some summers and winters. Yeah, but I've been monitoring and observing and trying to build. But I felt the 90 need seconds. To, uh, to get online and hear this program tonight. As you predicted last time we talked, which is a while ago, this is was going to be a regular occurrence. The black purge, as they've basically been been on the march now. Well, we, we let them know that black blood comes without consequences. We let them know that they can kill us in the streets. We let them know that our reactions will be intangible. And even worse, we have now set a new dangerous precedent. And the dangerous precedent that we set now is that if you kill us, we're going to pick up our cell phones and go straight to YouTube or straight to Twitter. That's what we're going to do. Or worse, you're gonna do like this, 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 this low life. Who in North Charleston, he recorded. Uh, he recorded Walter Scott being killed, and then wants to make a payday out of it. And this is what occurs when we, as a race, have no code, and we're basically been severely punish for our for our reaction. It's inappropriate. It's not what we need to do. We need to be organized. And we need to, like you say, get our, our economic strength up because we're basically being brutalized and systematically killed on every front. You know, well, I, I think that I don't know. I think that the problem is black people have now made a fad out of rioting after somebody gets shot it's no longer even a tactic black people have created a fad of civil un out of civil unrest now 
it's become just a more creative and effective way of getting on TV and Facebook and Twitter. Black people have created a fad out of civil unrest. And that's worthless. What it might appear to be. That's what it appears to be. But we're being denigrated at every turn. I was watching the story, and they kept mentioning the black gorilla family, the Crips, the blood. These people are criminals. <laughs> you know, I don't know how they just mentioned that, which, of course, is meant to demonize and dehumanize the opposition, which would be us, the black race. But they kept beating that drum that it's the black gorilla family and the black gorilla family this and the gangs are working together and this is unprecedented. So they're trying to make it seem like it's just anyone out there who might unfortunately end up with a bullet in their head from the, from the special forces that they sent in there. They're all just gang members. Well, we should be targeting them. The people who are saying those things, we ought to be targeting them. We need to know who our enemies are. Rawlings, Blake, and the rest of them, we should be targeting every single one of them. They're talking about, black folk are talking about, uh, what's that, the police were at the, the at, at, at uh, Gray's funeral? We should have had video of that all over the damn place. That makes people look like they're uncredible when they say things like that and can't prove it. Should have had, We should have video of that wall to wall, 360 degrees, showing that. That we're at this funeral, and here are the police outside stalking and harassing people at a funeral. There should be video everywhere of that. We should be our own news reporting agencies for that. Every damn black person got a cell phone, but you don't want to record anything except a couple of ratty hoes fighting. We should be our own media outlet. Because that's what happened in Ferguson. The national media would not cover it. So local people had to cover it, and unfortunately, for whatever better or worse, they were putting it up on their Instagrams and their Facebooks and whatever. But at this point right now, it's now mutated and progressed to people using that as a tactic to get attention. Damn that. We should be using that as a tactic to identify our enemies. And document what our enemies are doing. We should, but unfortunately, I don't think the blood has ran thick enough for enough of the mass black community to understand that we need a code and we need to get organized and we as black men have to get dead serious even though it's been past time but it it seems like it just hasn't reached a high enough pitch I don't think there's been enough bodies dropped yet because I still get as I try to talk and educate and uplift, I still get the same hide my head in the sand response from black men. They want to go to God. They want to go to the Bible. The time for God and the Bible going has been done. It's over. But that's where they still want to go. It's I guess it just masks the cowardness that we have to deal with, unfortunately, but I really don't know what else the solution is. I guess maybe there has to be more more of these cops, these white cops slaying black men and black children and black women all over throughout the country before we really get the point. I said this years ago, and you were there because you heard me when I said it, because you all used to ask me all the time, TBA, what's it going to take to wake black people up? Over half a decade ago since I started doing this broadcast in 2009, over half a decade now, And what did I say to you all then? That what black folk are waiting on is for white supremacists to show up at their doorstep and start burning crosses and hanging black folk from every street lamp. And even then, that will not be enough to move about half of us. Well, guess what? They have progressed to... They progressed to the Hank killing killing you on every street corner. Now they progress to that. So now we're going to find out who's still watching Empire and Scandal. And who is making their number one priority to say, hey, we're in a damn war zone. We ain't got time to watch television. We don't have time for that. We should be building our base up because these people could show. I guess if you take the threat realistically, then you see it like me. I take the threat realistically. And what that means is that I understand that they could show up at my door at any second. And that's why I take it seriously like that. Of course, I'm from a city where that's what they used to do. And they still can now. 
we're a majority black city, but that won't stop a couple of wildcatters from trying to get through. And I, I'm always cognizant of that. But as a people, black folk are sitting up here living with a I'll take my chances mentality. And it doesn't work, Omeki, and it doesn't work. Because everybody's just gambling that today is not their day. That's all they're really doing. Today is not, hopefully today is not my day. And we see what that mentality has brought us. Now they have carte blanche to just kill you in the street. It's almost a foregone conclusion that they're going to get off if they're ever even charged. I mean, I don't know. I I, I can say there's more wellness and there's more people uh, woken up and I've been, you know, ordering a couple of the 7 a.m. and trying to spread that economic, black economic message. And I'm getting, I'm getting a better response because of all the killings of our own kind. But it's still, when I get to the, well, why don't we organize and let's say, I don't know, start a, <laughs> our own gun club or let's fund, let, you know, let's find a business that we can all fund as a group of men it's still I can't get past this this incredible hurdle of well we should just pray, but this is not from women though. This is this is the problem. This is from men. No, these no Black no no. Men. These 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 are females with scrotums. That's what you found. Can we just be all the way real about it? Most of these black males running around out here today are females with scrotums. I mean, forget the skinny jeans and the, the prancing elites and, and all that mess. Just forget that. These fellas have been infantilized. They've been effeminized. They are waiting and eager to be led by females. And they are responding to masculine situations in a feminine manner. They have been taught how to respond to these situations like a bunch of hoes. And that's what they're doing. Females appeal to non-physical remedies when a physical problem happens. That's what females do. Males are not supposed to be res re re responding in non-physical manners to physical threats. We're never supposed to do that. We are supposed to respond to physical threats in a physical manner. That's what we're supposed to do. And when you've got a male who is sitting up here saying, God will fight my battles for me. What that nigga is really telling you is that he's hiding behind God. Like a child hiding behind his mother. I ain't going to get out there. Let me hide back behind here. I ain't going out there. And then you catch them and you see them. Hardest thing at the club. The white folks run up on him. Next thing you know, he is the most simpish, sissified thing you ever met. Disgusting. And it's not an accident. So, brother, what he's showing you is, I, I mean, if, if you if you heard from a couple of weeks ago when I played the video, uh, when played the uh, audio of Walter Scott's mother singing hymns. Yes. Four old senior Four. citizens. A bunch of whipped dogs, two females and two males. One of them looked like a black Wilford Brimley. Sitting there singing hymns. This man is dead and they sitting there singing a song. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Now, don't you know that every conqueror and every killer and every empire on earth would love to teach their enemies that song? That, don't you know that, that uh, Christopher Columbus and George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and George Custer and all the other white supremacist conquerors, don't you know that they would have loved to have made that song the national anthem of Africans everywhere? Africans, Native Americans, Mexicans? Wouldn't you love that to be the national anthem of somebody you're looking to, 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 to overthrow and take over without much of a fight? He's not talking about I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. He's talking about I'll trust in the Lord till I die. Well, good. You sit there and wait for the Lord to show up. And meanwhile, I'm going to take your clothes and your gold and your house. Ooh, your woman's kind of cute. Let me take that too. You sit there waiting on the Lord till you die. 
is that disgraceful and shameful. Permeates. It is a disgrace. That is shameful. They should be ashamed. They're not, but they should be. I'll let you have the last word. I just want to say it's good to still be a part of the only black empowerment community just trying to fight this white madness. And as always, brother, I'm with you. And I uh, do what I can, even if you don't hear from me. Black first. Black first as always. Thank you very much for checking in with us, Old Mickey and Descendant. Checking in out there from parts unknown. You don't need to know. Caller from 412. You're on live with the Black Channel. Caller from 412. Last try. You're on live with the Black Channel. Okay, caller from 412 is molesting his receiver. Caller from 718. You're on live with the Black Channel. Okay, caller from 718. Okay, the white supremacists are all checking in now. And they want us to know that they're listening, and that's perfectly fine because we know you're out there. And not everybody is out there trying to get attention. Not everybody is resorting to things that don't work. Everybody's not doing that. There are black people who understand what you're doing and what it takes to stop you. Brothers and sisters, you've learned a valuable lesson tonight. At least I hope you have. I hope that you have learned the lesson that white supremacy is on the march. They're not playing any games. They understand that black people have changed up our playbook slightly. We no longer march and protest. We march and throw rocks. So white supremacy is adjusting. The white racist establishment is adjusting. They're evolving. They understand what you're going to do now. So they just try to box you in and, and, and seal you off and isolate you. Until eventually you run out of rocks to throw and buildings to burn and things to set on fire. Then it's over. Now they're not going to stop killing you. And they're not going to stop murdering you. They're not going to stop raping you. They're not going to stop violating your rights. They're just going to isolate you so that when you do have a flare up, they can let it burn itself out. And that's what's going on now. Now, I want things to be different. I want us to actually have something that works. You can yell, you can scream, you can coon, you can whore, you can bedwench, you can march, you can protest, you can pray, you can bow down and butt dance, you can do whatever you want to. But at the end of the day, there is no avoiding it and there is no escaping the inevitable. You simply must get your economic house in order. You must have an economy. You must be business owners and entrepreneurs who get your money from yourselves and make your money on your own. If you do not do that, then simply put, nothing else you try to do is going to matter. Everything else you do is temporary except your economy. Your economy is where you make permanent things happen. And if the black people of Baltimore do not see this as their wake-up call to rebuild a black Wall Street, it's over for you. It's over. It's over. The first civil rights generation failed. They are officially acknowledged as a failure. The question for you is are you going to be the second civil rights generation? Because the first civil rights generation, they beat them into submission and made them bite at the apple of integration. You, they don't need you to integrate anymore. The civil rights generation was maneuvered into integration. The second civil rights generation, 
No, you're not going to be maneuvered into integration. You are going to be maneuvered into extermination. The first civil rights generation was maneuvered into integration and desegregation. The second civil rights generation is going to be maneuvered into annihilation. That's it. Now choose. And this concludes tonight's broadcast of the BlackChannel.net radio. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, the Black Authority. And until next time, brothers and sisters from around the world, remember, black is the future, and the future is uncompromising.